Hey there, welcome to another episode of Cooking with Violet Bixen. Today we are making treacle sponge with strawberries and cream. There's a few ingredients needed and I'm going to talk you through all of this um, and I'll tell you what I've done wrong. It's not super wrong but it's one of those mistakes that you make when you're in a hurry. Okay, so pop your oven on to 180. This is the first step. Grab two. They're like a sponge pan for if you do, they're a very small one because we're going to put half the mix in each one. Grease those and line them, just the base. Okay, so let me talk you through our ingredients. Okay, so we need three cups of plain flour, which we're going to sift. One tablespoon of ground ginger, which we're also going to sift. And a sprinkle of nutmeg. 250 grams of unsalted butter. That is a whole stick. So just go buy one, use the whole lot. Chop it up. Two eggs. Half a cup of treacle. Treacle can be confused for golden syrup but there is actually treacle so if you can get treacle just use treacle um cup of milk whatever milk you prefer i use light milk then we're gonna do a teaspoon of bicarb mixed with one tablespoon of water okay where i've gone wrong i thought i had cream i've been using cream in my coffee cream that i had was a bit near i threw it out I've only got a little bit of light thick cream. This doesn't whip up very well. However, I'm stuck with it because seven o'clock at night, I am not going up to the supermarket. So that's what I've got. Fresh strawberries and icing sugar. If I had more energy, I would have discovered this yesterday, but didn't really care. The urge for cake passed me by, which shows you how tired I was for me to not make cake. Okay, so let's go. And if I didn't mention it, we also need our mixer as well. So just grease the bottom, bit of margarine on a tissue. You don't need to do the sides because um, with the sponge cake, it's light enough it will actually leave the sides, but it doesn't hurt to do the sides anyway, just in case. All right, so easiest way is to cut the circles to the right size so you haven't got any anything hanging up and that way you'll get a smoother finish on the outside. I must say I really don't like this brand of baking paper. If you saw the brand, you'll know. If you didn't, I'm not going to name and shame them other than just exactly what I said. Easiest way to do this is to just trace a circle. Probably don't even have, oh, there we go. There's a pencil. So I'm not an artist, obviously, because that was the worst circle ever. And this is the worst pencil, so one and one makes two. Near enough is good enough. All right, cut those circles. The only reason I'm trying to make this look really nice is because you can present a sponge cake really well if your said sponge cake hasn't got like I normally have where I have the folds of paper coming up the side. I mean most people I feed cake to are just happy that I'm sharing it with them so I'm not going to lie. Um, however if it was to impress someone. I'd go like this. So we get a nice finish. 
perfect there we go so set these aside we don't need them just yet okay so we've got that sieve over a bowl so first step is to sift three cups of plain flour into here do it gradually We need a tablespoon for when we do the ginger. It sounds like a lot of tablespoon, uh, tables, a lot of ginger. That's because it actually is. But it'll give it that nice gingery taste. I'm really hoping the cream's going to be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that back in the fridge because I need that to stay thick. Just for your information, that sort of cream doesn't normally whip up, um, hence why it's called light. But maybe if I'm lucky, it might. If it doesn't, then I'll just put extra strawberry jam in and just a little bit in the middle or something. I'll work it out anyway. I just use the base of that or a spoon just to guide the rest of it through. Okay, grab that ginger. We want one tablespoon. Now, of course, it doesn't want to come out. That's close enough. And a sprinkle of nutmeg. This nutmeg doesn't have a very good lid. That's a very big sprinkle, by the way. Okay. Once we've done this, we're going to set this aside. I've flung nutmeg everywhere. Oh well, it'll deodorize the kitchen. All right, say bye to that. Say bye to that. Set that aside. Okay. Next up, we want our mixer. Place your softened butter. If um, you're living in Sydney, it'll be um, more melted than mine is. It's still hot up here in the Blue Mountains today, though. Welcome to late summer. All right, get this mixer. Okay, pop these in here. As much as I love the look of the new mixers, I don't really have any desire right now to race out and spend $500 plus on all these extra things. So if you got one of those, good for you. Because I know they do a lot more than this one does. But as I said, I'm, I'm happy with what I've got. Okay. Get your unsalted butter, chop it up. The main reason why I say to chop it up is because that is a lot. See, it's already melted and I've only had it out of the fridge for I don't know how long. I don't want to look at the time. When it gets late, I don't like to look at the time. I just like to power through what I'm doing and get, get to the finish line. Mainly because I'm cooking dessert before I cook dinner. Which is strange, I know. Alright, so just chop it about yay big. In it goes. As I said, it's good when it's melted. Um, if you want to soften it in the microwave a bit, you can. But 
soften not melt there's a difference soften will be basically like I've got now melt will be yeah not good not good for your cake because you want to sort of mix it all in together okay that is all the butter most sponge cakes do use about that much butter so don't be stressed about it just um, if you are on a budget factor into it that you're not going to get any spare butter for anything else you are using the whole lot all right that and a cup of sugar are going to go in together cup of sugar is your white sugar so set this one off just on a very low um, speed I was going to say temperature and it goes it'll resist it for a while but it'll be fine once that's all done, we're going to add the eggs one at a time. You have two of them. So I'm going to get the cup ready for when I break the eggs. Those that are regulars of watching the show know how I put my eggs in. And I do that so that A, I can check to make sure my egg is okay. And B so that I can make sure that I don't put any shell in it because you might not taste it but if you do it's not pleasant. I like shell free cake thank you. All right I'm just popping the topping out of the way just to give us a bit more room. I have a small kitchen but I just go to prove that you don't need a big kitchen to cook. You just need to clean up after yourself more. That's all it means. Okay, so while this is going on, we're also going to measure out a cup of milk and half a cup of treacle. Now, if you've seen my trip trick for measuring treacle, you will know that the best way to measure treacle is to spray the cup maybe not that much went a bit overboard with that that way when you go to tip it out it doesn't stick And you can use the rest of the treacle up for your porridge. As I say, it's very similar to golden syrup. I was going to have to buy more golden syrup soon anyway, so for me that's a win-win. I always try and stick to the original ingredients, um, unless obviously I can't. Or in this case, I think I've got it and I don't have it. It happens though. All right, I'm going to grab another cup for when we do the water with the bicarb. One teaspoon of bicarb in with one tablespoon of water. your water first this is just to help it rise because we're using plain flour just grab a teaspoon and mix that in well okay your butter's starting to look mixed in which is good so we can start and get the egg ready all right, that's our bicarb and water. 
we need to measure one cup of milk. Okay, so grab an egg, do the crack in the cup. Pop your first one in. Get your next one ready. Just wait a bit until this one's fully mixed in before we put that one in. Bring over the um, flour mixture and grab yourself a large spoon. Okay, that egg's in, so in goes the next one. Okay. Stir in the treacle, milk and bicarb. See how it's all coming straight out of the jug? Look at that, perfect. The milk, the one cup, in goes that one. And in goes that bicarb mixture. Okay, now cut this down to very low because we're just going to fold this in. You can smell the ginger as it's mixing as well. If you're a big fan of gingerbread, you'll love this, I'm sure. It's not your traditional uh, white looking sponge cake. It looks like it's going to be more like a ginger style, spice style. Yum. I thought it'll be a nice one. Okay. Now my mix is starting to struggle. Okay, so what I'll do is grab my two pans over, get my handy pink spatula, and we're dividing it between the two. Okay, so there's not really a fancy way of doing this. What I like to do before I do that is just grab your spatula and just make sure that all the butter is in. I was talking about um, mixers. Some mixers get right to the bottom. This one doesn't. So if, you, if you're not careful, you're going to end up having a bit of a buttery effect going through it. It's very light, which is good. All right, so about half in each. Maybe about that much in that one. Same, same deal with the other one. Now, you should have your oven on 180. Um, I got mine on 160 because it thinks it's fan-forced. When I treat it like a normal oven, it... Um, burns so I'm going for this way all right still got plenty of mixture here these are actually the proper 
sponge cake pans, believe it or not. Um, I do like making the sponge cake with the jam and cream. And these are the correct size. I don't use them too often. But when I do, they're very good. Another one I like to make is the Swiss roll where you roll it up and then you unroll it and then you put the filling in it. All time classic cakes. This one's a variation on the old time classic sponge cake. Okay, in they go for 15 to 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to try and put them on a tray. I don't think they'll go on the same tray together though. No, unfortunately they won't. Okay, I can actually put them in like that. Okay, so 15 minutes I'm going to give them and we'll be back. Okay, so it sort of failed, not 100%, but 160 was too low and because I had one perched on top of the other, that was a no-no. So next time, two shelves, one on one shelf, one on the other. Uh, so I did end up having to cook them a bit longer. This one turned out okay, so this is going to be the bottom. This one... It's a bit gluggy, that could be the butter. So basically just letting them cool now. So you want a smooth surface to be your base and then that one's gonna go on top of this, so. And good news, I was able to actually whip up the cream that I didn't think would whip up. So 10 out of 10 to me, I did one thing right. But I'm in the middle of trying to cook something else. So here's what we need to complete this. We are going to spread them with spread it with jam. When I say it, I am referring to the one on the serving plate. I really am out of bench space. The the next thing is quite epic. I've got pastry out and I've been chopping things, so I sort of don't want to start that until I finish this one. Okay, so just chuck some jam very carefully on this. Hopefully it would have cooled enough. You don't want to be putting this on a hot cake. However, I am going to refrigerate the whole thing anyway. I should get one of those cake spinners that I've seen them use where the cake spins. Maybe. Okay, um, the cream that did actually whip up. I'm not going to have enough to do the top with the cream as well, so we'll see how we go. It's not super thick. It's not very thick at all. All right, I'm going to leave it at that because I really do want more to go on the top. We've got to try and redeem ourselves with this crappy top. I'm sorry to say crappy but seriously you'd be pretty disappointed with yourself too if you go to rely on what your oven normally treats you like and then the day that you want it to do what it doesn't do makes a liar out of you. Okay so presentation wise it doesn't look too bad. And it's cooked on the top, so it's fine. I'm happy enough with it. 
put the rest of your cream on the top. The reason why I said to put more cream on the top is so that we've got something to put those strawberries on. Now I'm actually lucky that I did, was able to get good strawberries. Let me just say if you were judging me on this one, I would not be giving you the side that I know isn't cooked. All right, so just position those over the top. And I would refrigerate it, especially in this horrible hot weather. I pick great days to be in the kitchen or nights. Okay. Sprinkle some icing sugar over the top once you're done. And whatever strawberries you've got left, just use up with it. Make a smoothie with them. Whatever. Whatever amuses you. All right, when you put your icing sugar on, you want to sift it over the top so it looks pretty. just going to do it like this beautiful well thank you for watching cooking with violet vixen treacle sponge with strawberries and cream I got there in the end uh, nothing new for me lately I don't give up if I've got the wrong ingredients or something's not quite right um, and I want everyone to have the same attitude in the kitchen. You're trying to have fun. People will eat it because you've made it. In all honesty, I'd rather someone give me their first attempt of a cake than say, oh, I went down to the bakery and brought you this. I'd rather do that. All right. I'm going to catch you very soon on our next adventure. Bye.